welcome or welcome back to my channel if you're new here uh today's video is looking a little different than i'm used to doing it's a tutorial what i used to do i've done like a couple hair tutorials but yeah this is like a real tutorial like real for real like me telling y'all how to do it not me just doing it and hoping y'all figure it out so yeah this is my first crocheting tutorial on my page if you guys like this video and want more of it please show this video some love because I've been having a good time since I've learned how to crochet. And, yeah, it's pretty fun and good passing time and relaxing. So, today we're going to be making, we're going to be making this bag. You might have seen it on TikTok. If not, you're welcome. Um, this is the medium version. I also made a smaller version, but it's the same idea, just less yarn. So, yeah. Let's get into this video. Okay, to get started, you'll need this type of yarn, the loop yarn, and your hands. Possibly scissors. I don't need them because I use the whole thing. Okay, and now you're going to watch me struggle in a second to find the end of this, but that's the first step is finding the end or the start of the yarn, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to struggle for a, like a long time. I got it though. Okay, that's not the end, but keep going until you find the end. Okay, come on, Honor. Bam, found it. Okay? Okay, now once you found the end, you're going to want to work in these loops. This is going to be the only time during this project you work in these loops. So, to chain, which is what this is called, this is called a chain, you're going to want to grab the first loop and pull the next loop through that loop. And you're going to only want to have one loop. In, on your finger at a time on this part it's going to kind of look like a braid as you're going one side will look like a braid the other side will look a little bit different but if that's the case you'll know you're doing it right so you just continue until you have your desired length i'm going to show you guys in a second what it should be looking like as you're going along this is what it should look like and then you want to going to continue this until you have your desired length so I'm estimating right here I think I ended up doing shorter than that though I should have probably counted to tell you guys how many that is exactly uh, but you could count the loops and I'll put it on the screen And then once you've finished the 12 chains, you're going to have this last loop and you're going to work, you're going to chain one, but this time you're going to chain the entire thread through and not just a loop. So you're going to pull the whole thread through. So you should be left with something that looks like this. And then you're ready to work through the rest of the stitches. So your chain should look like this. I'm going to point out what side you should be working through. So as you can see, there's two sides. So as you're going through, you want to make sure you're only going on one side. So there's each there's two loops on each side, and you want to make sure you're working on one side for the first row, and then going to the other side. So now we're going to start working through the loops showing you again what loops I'm talking about so you're going to pull a piece through that loop so then you should end up with two pieces okay, I'm just showing you guys how I do it I use my little tiny finger and pull it through honestly this is the hardest part of this project is doing the bottom so then you should have two pieces like this so you have two loops in your hand and then you're gonna just pull the thread the yarn through both of those loops 
again I'm showing you guys that you want to just work on one side and not the other side and you can see the difference there of what's the side you should be working into looks like again two loops and now you're going to pull the thread through both of them and this is your new loop and you're going to continue this through each of the loops on the chain to be honest I did not work in every single one I low-key forgot some but you don't want to forget too many then your purse is going to have holes in the bottom so do your best to get every one but it does start to get hard to see as this yarn is very fluffy and can get in the way so again two loops and then you pull that thread through both of them and this stitch is usually called a single crochet uh, it looks a little different with this type of yarn because it's harder to tell what you're doing and then again just going to continue this working through the loops I believe I do a couple like one more and then I kind of skip to when I'm at the end I just want to remind you guys be careful not to work through those small loops it's easy to get them mixed up so make sure you're working through the bigger loop and not those smaller loops on the thread from the yarn So at this point you should be at the end of your chain that you created at the beginning. Um, this definitely looks like a Swiffer right now, but trust the process, it's, going, it's coming together. Now you're going to want to work on that other side of the chain, which you should have only been working on one side. And you're going to go into those loops with the same technique that we just used with the single crochet. And you should, don't let go of the loop from the last because that's going to be hard to find. But now you're going to just work into those loops on that side. Uh, and yeah, and start from there. Continuing with the same pattern or, yeah, that we just used. Getting our thread through there, our yarn through there. And then you got to put two loops on our fingers. And then you're going to pull the yarn through both of those loops and have a new loop on your hand. And then you're going to continue that all the way down, making sure you find the actual loop so the bottom of your back is closed. I don't want y'all stuff falling out and y'all blaming me. Okay, so I'm going to come back once I am done with this side. So finish that and we'll be back. This is what the final end of the bag bottom of the purse should look like you can kind of see where the chain was and it should be relatively a rectangle ish a long oval maybe it's better description so now you're going to want to find two loops that we've been working on so you should be able to find and again we're still working through the large loops we made here i am showing you guys you want to work through that hole which are going through both of those loops with the yarn and still have the 
we're going to continue to single crochet up. And then I don't know if I did it on this row, but the can, the rows following, why oh, do do it? Look at me, I'm stuck. <laughs> okay, so here right here, I realized I need to chain one first before I single crochet, just to make sure the bag is going up rather than just like a rug. Okay, so after you chain one, now we're gonna go through both of those loops again, and. That was me just showing you guys again what I did. But now we're going through both of those loops. And we're going to continue to single crochet. And this way our bag continues to go up and give us the height that we want. And yeah. So this is going to be the same process. And you're going to continue to do this pattern all the way until you have your desired height of the bag. And I didn't mention this earlier. But obviously if you want a smaller bag you chain less and just work with that. But it's the same process you just chain less and that's the way to get a smaller bag so I'm gonna to continue to do this it's the same thing that we just did but instead of working into those smaller loops we're working into the loops we just created and make sure you're working through both you're gonna to want to work all the way around the bag so remember what side you started on and work all the way back to that end and then you're going to chain one again and the process continues um, and then I'm going to just give you guys a couple more examples of how I do it in regular speed and then I'll speed it up This is three to four rows, I believe. And at this point, this is where I wasn't too worried about working into every single stitch, especially since I got a wide enough base. I just wanted to make sure I was getting all the way around and getting the bag to the height that I wanted. So I'm still doing the same thing. I chained one and now I'm single crocheting into the loops, into both loops still. Remember to go through both sides, otherwise your bag is gonna like close in on itself. So just continue to do that. This project honestly shouldn't take you too long, even as a beginner may take it this took me approximately maybe an hour maybe two so if you're a beginner I think this would be a good project to start with or you know just hit me up I'll make you a bag not for the free though <laughs> okay but yeah so I continue to do this until I got my desired height which I would say is a about eight to nine inches. I 
This is the row completed, or well, there's one more stitch, but this is me showing you the bag, and then I show you guys how high I'm aiming for, which I already told you guys is 8 to 9 inches. Okay, this is the final bag. Yeah, look at that inside. Okay, looks like a bag. <laughs> okay, to make the strap is so easy. <laughs> this is probably the easiest part. So you're going to chain one once you get to the, your desired length or height chain one and I'm just showing you guys how to chain again and then the to make the handle you're literally gonna just chain until the length that you want so if you want a clutch obviously your straps gonna be shorter shorter if you want a shoulder bag it's gonna be a little bit longer or if you want a crossbody bag it's gonna be long longer than those two obviously but obviously it's gonna differ from everybody I kind of just measured mine well I did it until I was out of yarn but yeah so just test it out before you finish it off here is me showing you can get a clutch. I don't know why you would want that big of a clutch. And then I show you guys what a shoulder bag would look like. Okay, maybe not. Look at that focus on that face. Love to see it. Yeah, okay, then the shoulder bag. Honestly, a shoulder bag would be cute. But I was going for a crossbody bag, so I continue to chain until I got the length that fits my body as a crossbody bag I'm sorry I don't have all the numbers if you guys want a more detailed um, tutorial let me know with all the numbers and I'll definitely get that out to you guys and then at the end and then I'm gonna show you guys how to finish it off Okay, and then to finish, you're going to have that last loop that you chain. And then you're going to have this long piece of thread. You're going to put your loop against the loops that are like you're going to continue to do the stitch that we've been doing. But instead of making another loop, you're going to just pull that thread straight through. Pull it, a, pull it tight. And then I kind of just, because I didn't want to cut it. I just worked it through like random loops make sure you finish on the inside though so you don't have like a piece of yarn sticking out and then I also went back through the loop we made at the beginning of this part of attaching it just to secure it more I think I'll show you guys up close of that too So here I'm finding the loop we made and I'm just taking that leftover thread and going through that loop to kind of make a knot to secure the strap. And then that piece, you can cut that piece at this point, but I do continue to work it through like I just was doing and then ending with the thread on the inside. Just so I wanted this to be a hands and yarn project only. So, and that's the final bag, and that's what it's looking like. Oh, that's so freaking cute. Yes, it's giving. Can't wait to see you guys, what you guys make. Uh, and yeah, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for more exciting content. Alright, love you guys. Oh, this is extra details, how much yarn it was. <laughs>